Hello, I'm Steve Olson, the Manager of Training Services for Mesa. In this video, I'd like to take a look at a new feature in Inventor 2023 that will allow us an easy way to send our designs to Fusion 360 so we can utilize workflows in Fusion 360 for manufacturing, simulation, and generative design. So here I have a part file open, and if I go to my Fusion 360 tab of Inventor, you'll see that it lists out a handful of different workflows that I can leverage some design, some manufacturing, some simulation, and generative design. In this case, let's say I want to create some milling operations to cut this out on a CNC machine. So I can use my subtractive workflow here. So I click on that. It will open up this panel uh, that's explaining what's going to happen. You can see here, I can tell it not to show this, but because I do training, I like to to leave these dialog boxes uh, the way they are so I can show people how they work. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue here. So what's gonna happen, it's gonna look to see which Fusion 360 team I have available to me. So I've got my Mesa training one here and it's going out and seeing which projects are part of that team. If I wanted to move it to a different team, I by all means can do that. It's just gonna be a matter of changing this dropdown. So I'm gonna let it load up my projects and I have a project here to show off some new features. So you can see I have my Inventor 2023 new feature spotlight. I'm going to select that folder. And I do have uh, a name that I can give. And I'm just going to let it be called, called caller.ipt. I'll hit upload. And it's going to have to save it. That's fine. It'll save and it'll upload. And then that will be available in Fusion 360 for me then. All right, so now I'm in Fusion. If I expose the data panel over here, you can see that I've got my caller.ipt. I have another file that I pushed up here earlier, and then I already did some cam work on that one. So if I wanted to start doing the cam for this one, you might think you might want to open, hit open here, but notice that that actually ends up creating a new file that it uh, basically derives that into. So what I typically do here, once this thing is actually caught up, you can see it essentially creates a new file and it doesn't really, it, it does have a um, derive operation there. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll create a new file and I'll save it here like this. I'll call it like cam for caller. And then I'll just use the insert into current design and allow that to place it into the design for me and it still creates essentially the same idea i think i personally like having a, a you know doing it this way but it's not that much different to just say open now well, the cool thing here is that there is some associativity here so let me jump back over to inventor and i'll open up that file that i previously uploaded And let's say I need to make a change here. What I can do is I can change this extrusion so it doesn't go as deep. So I'm going to edit my feature. I'll change this down to maybe a quarter of an inch depth. And if I go back to this Fusion workflow and I do subtractive, it's going to try to upload it as a separate file or a second file. This has already been uploaded. So let's say I've, I want to upload and then refresh that the tool paths and that other file that I've already worked on. So over here in my browser, you can see Fusion Exports and it's uh, housing top manufacturing or manufacturer subtractive. If I right click on this, I can say delete, open in Fusion, uplo upload new version, view, detail, view details on the web, etc. I'm gonna say upload new version. So it's going to uh, say the file will be saved and the data upload to Fusion team. I'll say okay there. Now, when I jump back to Fusion, you'll see that I get a little uh, warning here that this file has a new version and needs to be updated. So if I click on this, it's basically telling me that it's going to, this file has been updated. I'll update all. So now that it's been updated here, it looks like these tool paths need to be Regenerated here, I'll regenerate these. And this tool, page, 
toolpath will now update to match the, the new geometry. So I still have that associative link, which is a great way to do that. And the only thing I have to do here is just, you know, if I've ever changed the other model, rem remember to push the new version up and then come over here. Uh, if I'm the cam guy at this point, I will get notified with the little symbology everywhere. Hey, there's a new version of this. I need to refresh my toolpaths and we can then post process them from there. Well, that's all for now. I'd love to hear what you think of this new feature in the comments below. If you have any questions, uh, you can feel free to reach out to me at my email address there on the screen. And as always, thanks for watching.